So my research is in uh, investigating locally periodic approximations. Uh, I did this with Professor Stephen Johnson at MIT and, uh, and uh, with Dr. Rafael Pistori at Harvard. So first question, of course, what is an LPA? So an LPA, LPA stands for locally periodic approximation. Uh, these are approximation methods for functions. Um, a relevant concept is uh, periodicity. You probably recall periodicity uh, at, at sort of the most basic levels as you know the occurrence of some phenomena at regular intervals. Sort of a classic example of this is sine and cosine from trigonometry. And uh, a, a classic example of these periodic functions being used to approximate some other function is uh, uh, Fourier series. Uh, and, and Fourier series, as long as you have, as long as your target function is, you know, along, along the SOT interval is, is differentiable and real valued, then you can use Fourier series, which are essentially just these chopped up combined weighted uh, sine and cosine functions. Uh, and, and you can use these to, to obtain increasingly uh, better approximations of, of some function along some interval. And these are just four examples of that. So LPAs are great for when you're dealing with something that is almost periodic. And, and, and by this, I mean, you know, suppose, you take a look at this like sweeping hillside, for example. Uh, this would be something that's almost periodic because you know, these, these, little, these little notches, these little bulges, they occur uh, not quite at regular intervals and they don't quite occur uh, at the same you know, height uh, or, or magnitude. Um, so this would be an example of something that's almost periodic. And a common use of LPAs is, you know, when you're working with a function that is almost periodic, uh, for example, maybe you're looking at the, the propagation of light through some medium, but there are obstacles, uh, um, or maybe there's a change in medium uh, at some point. And uh, you, you want to take some sub-interval of the function you're using to model that, and apply your, uh, the, the LPA and pretend like the whole function is, is indeed periodic. Um, so that, yeah, that is, a common, that is a common use of LPAs. Uh, the, in our case, we're using something called the scalar Himmelt equation. This is an equation that is derived from the Maxwell equations, which are these, these partial differential equations in physics that are uh, uh, fundamental to um, electromagnetism, uh, optics, and uh, other fields as well. Um, and, and you can see u of x would be the target function, uh, you know, some, some unknown. Uh, you have g of x, which is you know, a known force. And then you have you know, these, other, these other variables that play, like, like second derivatives, um, uh, distance, and time. And um, the efficacy of an approximation method, uh, and certainly with these, with these LPAs, uh, depends on your choice of discretization. So whenever you're approximating something along an interval, the more points you take along that interval, the, the more accurate you can, you can expect your approximation to be. And that's, that's what LPA is doing. So essentially, u of x is um, a vector. Uh, and, and the number of entries that are in that vector depend on your choice of discretization. So this is an example of the same equation, but expressed exactly as I'm describing in sort of the form AX equals B, where A is you know, um, this the collection of you know, approximations of second derivatives, and U is, is the collection of you know, sought uh, uh, outputs for each point in your discretization. Um, so, so, you know, we've taken this equation that is in the language of differential equations initially, uh, and, and we've rewritten it so it's in the language of linear algebra, and we can delegate some of our tasks, uh, like, oh yeah, we, we wanna know if we take our approximation A uh, and we look at the actual A with like the actual second derivatives, how fast does it converge? Um, uh, and we can take those tasks and we can delegate them to, to our computers because they're great at linear algebra. Um, this is a great, ex this is a perfect example. We use Julia because Julia is especially great at linear algebra, it's a programming language. Uh, and this is a function that, that it does exactly that. It will, it will return uh, uh, that convergence. It will, it will tell you um, uh, how, how quickly your function will converge. Uh, preliminary results are, are that um, it, it, apparently, you know, based on this log plot, uh, that convergence does happen. 
uh, that our approximation does get progressively closer to the actual A. And the reason why this is significant is just because um, uh, not a lot of research has been done uh, to investigate the efficacy or speed of this approximation method. Uh, uh, so, so that's, that's what we're doing here.